name is Michael Du, and today I will be talking about the first step to curing cancer. So, cancer. This is a six-letter word that many of us hear about, but we don't really know about it. I mean, sure, we've heard words such as chemotherapy, or maybe even relapse, or perhaps even metastasis. But do we really know about the side effects that come with chemotherapy? Do we know that what causes relapse? Or do we know how to prevent met metastasis? Well, as I began to become more interested in these types of questions, I became really interested in cancer, and I wanted to see more about what this disease was about. So I contacted a pediatric oncologist, and I began shadowing him. And after physically visiting patients from the young age of two months old, to even close to my own age of 17 years old, I found that the side effects of the drugs that are working to cure the cancers are so profound and so prevalent in these young children. And I decided something really needed to be done to change this. So I became incredibly interested in carrying out my own independent research. So after applying to many research positions, I finally got one. And I began reading research papers upon research papers, upon research papers for weeks. And at first, let me tell you this, it was extremely challenging. I mean, imagine me, a mere high school student, attempting to comprehend full-length scientific research papers. I mean, I might as well have been reading in a different language. But as I read on and on, this process became seemingly easier. And one specific paper really caught my eye. And this was a paper about a young girl with neuroblastoma. And when she was being treated for her neuroblastoma, she acquired a blood, she had a blood transfusion, and through this blood transfusion, she acquired a parasitical disease called Chagas disease. Well, when the doctors wanted to treat her Chagas disease with a drug called Depertamox that they commonly use to treat Chagas disease, they found that her, subsequently, out of pure serendipity, her neuroblastoma tumor size decreased as well. I became incredibly interested in this drug, Depertamox. And fast forward a year later, and here I am to tell you today about my research. Okay, so the title of my research is Nefertimox limits cell proliferation in glioblastoma multiform in vitro. Wow, that can be a mouthful to some. But let me break that down for you. Glioblastoma multiform. What is glioblastoma multiform? Well, glioblastoma multiform is a stage four brain tumor. Unfortunately, it is most prevalent and one of the most dangerous brain tumors in adults. It has a very bleak patient prognosis as the average patient life expectancy is only about 11 months. Moreover, the, this, so only about 11 months. So what makes glioblastoma multiform so hard to treat? Well, there are two reasons. One, as its name suggests, glioblastoma multiform is multiform, genetically and microscopically, with various mutations and deletions. And secondly, and maybe perhaps even more importantly, glioblastoma multiform is bounded by something called the blood-brain barrier. This prevents most drugs from being able to have an effect on glioblastoma. So what does in vitro mean? In vitro simply means that my experiment were, was conducted in a controlled artificial environment, meaning my experiments were carried out through cell clay and in cell and flaps. And I did my research on three glioblastoma multiform cell lines. These were U373, U87, and PFSK1. And finally, what is nefertimox? Well, nefertimox is that novel drug that I mentioned earlier. But wait, nefertimox isn't a novel drug. It has been used for over 40 years to treat a parasitical disease called Chagas disease. So what do I mean when I say novel drug? Well, the Fertimox is not a drug that has been traditionally used to treat cancer. However, I am looking at the Fertimox's effect on glioblastoma multiform. And what makes the Fertimox different from traditional chemotherapy drugs? Well, the Fertimox is not a chemotherapy drug. It is actually a pro-drug, meaning that it must be metabolized in order to take an effect. This reduces the number of adverse side effects that currently exist in chemotherapy drugs. So why nefertimox? Well, like I just mentioned, nefertimox has the ability to lower the amount of side effects that patients are seeing. But more importantly, nefertimox is able to permeate the blood-brain barrier. What is the blood-brain barrier? Well, the blood-brain barrier is a barrier that simply separates, that separates the bloodstream and the brain, allowing only certain things to pass through. So regular proteins will pass through the blood-brain barrier, and drugs in your bloodstream will also try to enter your brain. Well, the blood-brain barrier prevents most drugs from entering your brain. 
However, the blood-brain barrier allows nephrotic mox to pass through. And that is so important because most drugs are not able to do this, and nephrotic mox is unique in that it is able to reach the brain. So, in my experiments, I wanted to see two things. First, I wanted to see if nephrotic mox could have a cytotoxic effect on glioblastin multiform cell lines. And secondly, and maybe even more importantly, if this were the case, I wanted to see, gain more insight on the mechanism of nephrotic mox. I wanted to learn more on the why and how it was able to do this. So first, to see if the first box could have that effect, I ran a cell viability test, which was, I looked at, I treated the three cell lines with the first box at 100 micromolars on the left and 200 micromolars on the right, at 24 hours to 72 hours. And as you can see, there was a clear trend in the effect of the first box. It lowered the cell viability at both 100 micromolars and 200 micromolars. But if we take a closer look at this effect at 200 micromolars, we can see that it lowered the cell viability to, in lump cell lines to a, as low as 29%. This was such a profound effect at such low concentrations and low time points. So I, I saw that the first box was able to have this effect, the cytotoxic effect, but I wanted to gain more insight on the mechanism. So to do this, through my experiments, I found that the first box took action in two ways. One, it induced apoptosis in glioblastoma multiform cell lines, and secondly, it inhibited cell signaling. So first, you may be wondering, what is apoptosis? Well, simply put, apoptosis is automated cell death. When a cell is induced with apoptosis, it will continue to shrink and shrink and shrink until only the intracellular components remain, and the cell is not able to perform a cellular function. So as you can see here in this animation, we have a glioblastoma on the multiform cell. Let's say I use the Fertimox to induce apoptosis in it. Well, it's going to start to shrink. And like I mentioned earlier, it's going to continue to shrink. And continue to shrink. Until finally, the cell dies. Secondly, I found that the Fertimox limited cell proliferation through inhibited cell signaling. So recalling all the way to AP biology, I learned that cancer cells communicate and replicate through something called cell signaling. They'll pass on their information from one kinase to the next kinase, sort of through a cascade effect. You can think of it like a domino effect. Well, as you can see here, this is regular cell signaling, where the one cell will pass on its information from one pathway to the next cell and another pathway. And as a result, the cell will proliferate. But in, inhib in inhibited cell signaling, let's say the fertimox in inhibits the cell pathway. Well, the next information is not being able to pass on, and the cell will eventually die. So through these two ways, I found that nephrotomox was able to limit cell proliferation in glioblastoma multiform. But what is the significance of my research? Well, one, nephrotomox serves as a potential viable alternative treatment to the current chemotherapy options that just aren't working. And secondly, and more importantly, nephrotomox serves as a model drug for future scientists to base their research on to find new treatments for not only glioblastoma multiform, but all other brain tumors alike. And finally, this has had such a profound effect on me. It has shown me as an individual that no matter what our age, we are able to have an effect on this world today. So back to the first slide. What is the first step to curing cancer? Well, it's the same step as doing anything in life. It's having these bold and creative ideas that can change our world. But more importantly, it's having the courage to pursue these bold and creative ideas. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that bold and creative idea. So obviously this has made a really big impact on your life. Will you pursue a future career in this field or will you continue your research? Yeah, so my current research was actually published in uh, major scientific reports, but I definitely plan on continuing this research, maybe with in vivo experiments, such as in mice. So yeah, and then in college, I definitely plan on continuing research and maybe even entering the medical field. So uh, what would you say, what has this experience taught you? Well, this experience has taught me that we, we can do anything in life. I mean, oftentimes we tell ourselves, you know, I'm too young for this. I'm not good enough for this. I don't have enough time for this. But really, it showed me that through dedication and hard work, we can accomplish many things that we set our minds to. Thank you very much. Thank you.